Hi, I'm Ed China and I love technology. Now you may have seen me messing around with old cars or strange vehicles, but today I'm in beautiful Trondheim in Norway to find out what this clever machining tool has in common with this huge building in Taipei. Well, to find out, we need to learn a bit more about vibration. So check this out. A vibration is an oscillation around an equilibrium point in a mechanical system. That might sound complicated, but a stringed instrument can demonstrate what that's all about. Energy is built up by stretching the string, and when we release it, what we get is an oscillation, a vibration that decreases if no more energy is added. And we measure the frequency in the unit of hertz. One hertz is one event or wave per second. There are good vibrations and bad ones. A speaker, for example, would work really badly without vibration. The same is true of an opera singer or an echo sounder. But usually, vibrations are undesirable. They consume energy, generate noise, and damage both equipment and people, which is why we use a variety of methods in an attempt to dampen them. Everything from sound dampening all the way up to seismic base isolation systems in large buildings. All objects have what's known as natural frequency, which is the frequency at which the object tends to oscillate when affected by forces like impacts, winds, tremors, or imbalance, for example. If the frequency is strong enough, and within our hearing range, we'll hear a sound or a noise. In cars, which of course is my specialist field, there are hundreds of different solutions designed to dampen every possible kind of unwanted vibration. And when it comes to machining, it's particularly important that vibrations are kept under control. So I've come here to Sandvik Coromant, the leading company in vibration-reducing technology for machining, to see how they do it. And for an engineer and tech nerd like myself, this is nothing less than Shangri-La. Dr. Mud, can you tell me what are the challenges with vibration when it comes to machining? If you have a cylindrical tool, approximately three times the diameter, that's the maximum length you can go with a solid tool. Okay. And if you have a damp tool, then you can go, you much, go much further. The steel has a certain uh, stiffness. Approximately ten times the diameter, steel has the end. So you cannot go especially further with steel. So even than with the damp tool, even with the damper, could, because wow. the okay. stiffness of steel isn't high enough. Yes. And then you have to go with uh, uh, carbides, or you have to reinforce it to get it stiffer. Wow, so the carboid is actually the same material that you'd be making the cutting tip Cut, out of? Cutting tip, yes. So how on earth do you machine that? That is a um, big, big challenge, because it's a really hard material. and yeah. can only be grinded with uh, something harder, Yeah. and that is uh, diamond. diamond. Yeah. Where is the damping bit? Is it sort of all the way through, or is it just at one end? Or Of course, the vibration is in the front, so yep. you actually you would like to put the damper at the insert. Right. So that would be more efficient. Yep. So it's placed as far to the front as possible. Okay, so then the damping magic, <laughs> if yeah, you like, yeah, is yeah. inside here. So you've got, I can see some O-rings. Yeah, you, you have to work with, with three things. That is the mass, which is a damping mass, okay. because it's a tuned mass damper. And then you have some springs, yep. because uh, you need to tune to, to the right frequency. Okay. And then you have uh, something that, uh, to add damping, which yes. is uh, oil. And oil, actually, so it's yeah. very much like a, a car suspension where you would have, you have your spring, obviously, to keep your wheel going up and down, yes. whatever, but then also you'd have the, the oil in the damper itself to absorb that vibration. Yes. Silent Tools uses a damping technique known as tuned mass damping, where a relatively light counterweight inside the tool absorbs kinetic energy of vibrations and uses a compensating frequency to eliminate them mechanically, rather than converting them into noise and heat. Hence the name Silent Tools. Now Dan, these yeah. tools come in all shapes and sizes, I guess. So is this the smallest that you manufacture? Yeah, this one is the smallest. It's 10 millimeters in diameter and okay. 10 times T in length. Wow, okay, so that is actually going quite long. Yeah. And you've got all the damping technology in the tip of this as before. Yeah. That's so amazing. That is really crazy. So that is quite one extreme. So what would be the longest tool that you could do? Yeah, measured in uh, times D. Yeah. That's the longest tool we make. Right, and what is That's that? 18 times 18 the diameter times and D. 100 millimeters in diameter. Wow, that is amazing. So, I mean, that really is a pretty extreme. I mean, it, it, would you say that was the most extreme tool that you do? 
Uh, not really, because it's uh, still quite stiff, because it's... Because it's 100 mil diameter. Exactly. Uh, well, this one is more extreme and harder to make to work, oh, I see. Uh, because it's lo more less diameter and 14 times deep. I mean, obviously in this world of computers and stuff, is, is an active tool sort of where you're headed, so you know exactly what's going on all the time? Yeah. Uh, the tool over there that we looked at before. Oh, well, that's, that's it? That's it. Wow. Okay, so that's obviously connected up to this machine. So, and that's what the screen is then. So, if I, can I try and deflect it? See what yeah, happens. Yeah, you okay. can uh, try and push it. That sounds like a challenge, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Look at that. So, what am I managing? Yeah. So um, that's 0 0.4 millimeters. 0 0.4 millimeters. That sounds. I mean, you know, I'm giving it some. <laughs> can we see it actually operate? Yeah, sure. I mean, is it like a normal, like a lathe? You'd, you'd actually have to set the tool up to make sure it's the right height and the right orientation? Yeah, uh, that is where, what the operator will start with, is to look at the tool setup. That's a level, a digital so level. So it knows where it is in yeah. space as well? And uh, we have the, the live view screen here. Which oh, so you've got us, temperature as well? Yeah. yeah, so it shows us the deflection and the load of the bar. Yeah. Total load is very important to know. Of course. And yeah. then we also measure the vibration level of the tool which is uh, very related to the surface you actually get in the end. Of course. So these are also two uh, very important yeah. uh, features that we measure. Fire her up, please. Yeah. Remember the skyscraper at the beginning? Well, it's called Taipei 101 and it's located in Taiwan. And what's interesting is despite its enormous size difference, it actually uses the same system as silent tools, tuned mass damping, to counteract vibrations and oscillations brought on by hurricanes and earthquakes. Their counterbalance, however, is slightly bigger, measuring 5.5 meters in diameter and weighing in at 660 tons. It even comes with its own mascot, the damper baby. Wouldn't it be cool to make a model to see exactly how tuned mass damping works? Well, I thought so, so I got my friends here at Sandvik Coromant to build one. How's the Hello. machining going? It's going very well. You want to see? Yes, please, yeah. Put your glasses on. Absolutely. <laughs> Look at that, that's fantastic. Well, yeah, gorgeous, right? Well, thank you, Greta. That is wonderful. You thank you. Look at that. I have Greta's part, which is great. So just, just maybe sand off the edge here. So, Karen, should we start attaching this? There we go. I think we're good. Yeah. yeah. One more to go. Nice. So that's mm. pretty good. Pretty good. Mm. Right. So now, obviously, we have our our tower. So there's a small hurricane. Yep. Or maybe an earthquake. So what would be really good is to actually maybe measure the frequency to see what it is at yeah. the moment, because it's obviously going to take a long time to just yeah. die down on its own, isn't it's it? It's a good idea. So now we have the laser spot here. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. fantastic. And this is a Doppler laser, so okay. this one measures the velocity. Oh, uh, that's clever. Okay. Oh, this one. So now we can give it a small push. Okay. Yeah, and then we just wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously that's where Karin caused an earthquake or a little hurricane. Yeah. And it's coming all the way down and down and down and down and down. It's basically got, it's taken so long the machine has got bored and just stopped measuring it. So in the same way with the silent tool, obviously mm. we now need to have a tuned mass and then we need to damp it. So what we need yeah. now is our little ball, as you say, so our 660,000 kilogram ball down into a little tiny thing and then we can put that yeah. into position. Yes. And then once it's in position we need to tune it, presumably, just to get it 
Exactly. So it vibrates you know, yes. in relation to the tone. Because we know the, we want the frequency of this one and the frequency of the pendulum yes. okay. to be quite similar. Okay, so let's have a look at our pendulum. Now, what is this weight made of? Uh, this is Wolfram or tungsten. Tungsten, so it actually is very heavy for yes, its uh, size. Yeah, yeah very high density. Yeah. Thread it through here. Yeah. Really? Just pop that down there for a start. So let's yeah. just get it so that it blocks yeah. the right way. Yeah. Is that there, do you think? Yeah. Now we can see. Okay, so it's got quite a fast sort of return. Yeah. So now if we lower that down. Now you can change the frequency of the ball. So now if we rock it again. So that's we a much more kind of relaxed. Frequency. So, yeah. so that's more in tune with the wing. So this is exactly effectively what you're doing inside the tools is you're having to change that down or tune that mass so that it actually does this transfer. Like that. Ah. I think that's uh, quite yeah. okay. Yeah. Now well, that's really interesting. So you can see the energy from the tower being transferred into the pendulum, but then actually transferred back out again. Yeah. 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 Excellent. So now the next thing is we need to damp this somehow. So obviously in the in the silent tools, mm -hmm. we use a, a special liquid, like a viscous liquid to do yes. that. So presumably we can do this the mm -hmm. same sort of way. So here's uh, our magic some, fluid. Some oil we yeah. can use to get some damping into the system. Well, probably completely top secret. Excellent. Basically. The magic ingredient. And it will be really interesting to see how this will work. And give it another earthquake, this maybe? Is, oh, please, yes. One of your finest earthquakes. Oh, Look wow. Look at that. Do that again. So now, in a car, obviously, the trick with the suspension is basically kind of one and a half bounces. And just to do that again, you've got kind of one and a half bounces. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. That's amazing. <laughs> Well, that is incredible. So, our model tower is now completely resistant to hurricanes and earthquakes thanks to tuned mass damping. And so, clearly, the physics works whether your tower is nearly 500 metres tall, whether it's a metre tall, or whether it's in a tiny tool. Yeah. I think we deserve a little round of applause. Yeah. So, now you know the similarities between this silent tool and Taipei 101. They're both subject to the same laws of physics and both damp vibrations with the same method tuned mass damping. Until next time.